As some of you may have already seen, the first Death Server Next update, Winged Alliance, is open over the weekend. And as a naval guy, it's quite an interesting update. Though sadly there were some things missing from this first Death Server that I'll go over later. First, let's take a look at the new ships we could see. To start off, we see USS Wilkinson, a premium counterpart to USS Mitcher, a recent addition to the US tree. The main difference with the Mitcher is the better 76mm guns. These have a higher fire rate and the removal of the 20mm guns. At a cost of 1,600 golden eagles, it's a bad pricey for what it is in my opinion, but I think it's a solid ship for that BR. Second, we have the German coastal vessel Flussi 1, which we already saw in a death blog last week, and of which I already made a post. I originally estimated that it would be 3.0 or 3.3, though I'm very glad to see that it instead is at 2.7, a much more suitable BR for a vessel of this type and I believe it should perform well at this BR. The 37mm gun will most likely be your main weapon of choice, with the quad 20mm being very good backup weapons, and the 88 being, well, maybe useful at long range. Third, and most certainly the gem of this death server, Tarnhorst. A controversial addition, to be sure, but I'm not going to go too deep into it, as I want to reserve it for its own review. But from what I can gather, I think Sharnhorst is going to be a very strong ship, the protection looks excellent, though don't be too confident in it. It's mainly the citadel that's well protected, so the engines and the ammo. I've heard from others that the crew sections above the citadel and the secondary mounts can lose a whole lot of crew when shot at by other battleships. I sadly couldn't test it, as I myself don't have access to Scharnhorst. One of these days I'll be a CC, dammit. But... Yeah, I'll have to see how the armor holds up in actual battles. The mobility is superb for a battleship, being able to keep pace with most cruisers. The only weakness, so to speak, is the main armament, I guess. These 9 283mm guns are certainly not bad, but I suspect that they might have some trouble against other battleships. But with Scharnhorst's armor, I don't think she'll be too worried. And with her speed, she'll be a menace in flanking positions and flanking routes. So keep your eye out for Scharnhorst. You're probably going to see a lot of them at top tier when this update hits live servers. The last ship we saw was the JDS Harukaze, a 4.0 Japanese post-war destroyer. At first glance, I thought it was just another Fletcher, but now with two guns removed. But upon a little bit of research, I found out it's actually the first domestically produced destroyer after the war though still using a lot of American equipment, as you can tell. I've played her a bit on the dev server, and it's a fine destroyer for the BR, though the lack of torpedoes is quite noticeable for a Japanese destroyer. I'll still get it, of course, and you can expect a full review of it soon after the update hits live. That's it for the ships we could see on this dev server, and there are, of course, the scout planes. Somewhat annoyingly, only available on Scharnhorst for this first dev server, which, as I said earlier, I don't have access to so I couldn't test this feature myself, either. It seems pretty straightforward, though. I'm not the greatest fan of relinquishing all control of your vessel just to have some fun in a float plane, though the smokescreen the plane can set seems rather useful if you want to smoke your route in advance. But I'll be sure to test these planes out thoroughly at another time. Another major change, though perhaps less noticeable, is to do with shell travel times, shell arcs and penetration statistics. In general, shell arcs are becoming flatter, with travel times becoming lesser. It's not easy to show this visually, but I hope these few clips help. Another major change is to shell penetrations of AP and SAP shells. In general, it's a buff, though depending on the gun and the shells, this can be a minor buff, or a very major one. I'm unsure what exactly this will do to the meta, but be sure that it'll feel different after this update, and it will have the largest effect on the cruiser meta by the looks of it, so be prepared. Another shell change is to do with the behavior of Samyama piercing when hitting the water. 
It seems that the distance I travel underwater will be changed from going 100 times their own caliber, as it does on the live server now, to only traveling for 0.01 seconds. This will heavily affect the viability of underwater penetrations, if I understood it correctly. This change seems to only affect the smaller caliber shells and the very large shells, so I'm not quite sure what it's going to be like for the intermediate shells, so for 140mm to 305mm, if they're going to touch those as well. There's also a change, according to the same person and the same post, that large caliber semi-arm piercing look like they'll perform worse against heavy armor. I recommend you read this post yourself for the exact wording, you can find it in the description. Another, somewhat major change is that British destroyers now carry a different torpedo. These have overall better characteristics, so the British DDs certainly become a bigger torpedo threat. This change is applied to Armada, Brissenden, Jervis, Kelvin, Nepal, Haida, Mohawk, Tribal, Tobruk, and Garland. There are a bunch of other changes too, like the rescue boat and PR-12412 being removed while in battle, and the rear 30mm gets a better firing angle, though I can't confirm it as I don't own the ship. Yugumo gets a better forward firing angle for the forward torpedo launcher, which can now also rotate 360 degrees. The 37mm gun on the SF-40 Lite is now different, and by the looks of it has better traverse speeds. Pensacola has some stuff shuffled around, mainly ammo racks, and in a good way. He also has some fuel tanks extended at the rear. Northampton has ammo elevators modelled for the secondary guns. M17's crew compartment in the bow got changed, it is now larger and most likely more vulnerable too. And for HMS Blackpool, her torpedoes now show up in the hangar. There are also a bunch of changes I just couldn't see with my own eyes and I just couldn't find really, so I don't know if they happened or not. So, quite a lot of stuff. But now I want to discuss the data mine stuff, which is namely another four ships and the missing scout planes. First, the ships. These would be the Russian PR-201K. Remember the PR-201M from an update ago? Well, I have heard it's most likely just the exact same ship, but with the rear 25mm guns replaced by a single 45mm rapid-fire gun in a similar vein to the 45mm guns found in the Russian Spokoyne destroyer, though obviously not in the same quad mount. The next one is the Russian cruiser Kirch, of which the model was also sneakily found on the dev server. This is an Italian Duca d'Aosta class light cruiser which was given to the Russians after the war for reparations, and is suspected to be the reward ship for the upcoming Operation Winter. There's a bit of confusion about this ship because the second Duca d'Aosta class ship, Eugenio di Savoia, was also mentioned in the data mine, but it's unclear if this refers to a separate ship in the Italian tree or if these two ships are the same ship, so we'll have to keep an eye out on that. Third, we have Aijian Hayanami, another premium Japanese destroyer, and basically just another Yugumo, with one more dual 25mm gun mount. It's as if Gaijin wants Japan to just keep it trigger for having more premium destroyers than Tech 3 ones. Last, like I mentioned earlier, we have the Italian cruiser Eugenio di Savoia, a Duca d'Osta class light cruiser. Again, it's unsure whether this will be in the Italian 3 as its own ship, or if it's somehow confused with the Kirch. It shouldn't be, because the Duca d'Osta class that became the Kirch is not Eugenio di Savoia. It was Duca d'Osta. But we'll have to see. As for the data mined sky planes, I'll go over them nation by nation and mention what ship carries them. First, I'll start with the US. They have the SOC-1, which is carried on Trenton, Raleigh, Detroit, Northampton, Portland, Pensacola, and New Orleans. The cruisers Cleveland, Brooklyn, and Pittsburgh have aircraft facilities, but I don't see any aircraft on them. But USS Baltimore does have an aircraft, and they're the US2U. So I imagine that these three will also be getting the OS2U as their scout plane. Another thing to mention is USS Wyoming, which has scout planes modeled, but I do not know which ones they are, and I don't see them mentioned in the data mine so I don't know if these will be functional by the time the update reaches the live server. I should also add, however, that I'm actually not sure which of the above-mentioned cruisers will have scout planes either. I just know that their model carries the mentioned scout planes. The next nation, Germany, 
doesn't have many ships that get a plane, but the ones that do all get the Arado 196, which is already in the game. These should be the new Scharnhorst, obviously. Hipper, Eugen, and Graf Spee. Not a large selection, but still a presence. Then we have Russia with their BE-2, which you can see on Kirov, Vrosilov, and Maxim Gorky. So basically just the Kirov-class cruisers. Not many, and only one tactical ship, but it's something, I guess. For the British, we see two planes in the data mine, but I'll start with the first one, the Osprey Mark IV. This can be found on Leander and Kant. Second, there is the Walrus Mark I, which can be found on York. There are two things I should mention, though. There are aircraft facilities on Southampton, but I'm not familiar with what aircraft she carried. The other is that there seems to be an OS2U of British markings on Enterprise. This specific aircraft isn't mentioned in the data mine, so I don't know if it'll be functional. Then, probably one of the longer lists, will be the Japanese. They have three aircraft mentioned, with the first being the E7K2. This one can be found on Kako, Kuma, Sendai, Furutaka, Fuzia, Mikuma, and Mogami. The second aircraft, the E8N2, can be found on Suzia as well. And yes, Suzia carries two different types of float planes. The third aircraft type, the E13A1, can be found on Agano and Mogami. Yes, Mogami also carries two different float planes, but not the same two different float planes as on Suzia. And interestingly enough, Mikuma only carries one type of float plane in the model. What I should also mention is that both Aoba and Tone have aircraft facilities, though I don't know what these ships carried. Lastly, Italy. Sadly enough, no float planes for Italy were in the data mine, though several of their ships have aircraft facilities, namely Raimondo Montecuccioli, Trento, Zara and Pola. Though unique to these last three ships, the facilities are mounted on the bow of the ship, as you can see here. These ships should be able to launch the RO-43 float plane, like pictured here. There is also an RE-2000 variant that could be launched off of ships, but this is only on the Littoria class battleship by the looks of it. So no float planes for Italy yet. To be honest, this section that I just went over is kind of redundant, as they'll release a full list of ships with a float plane function eventually, but it's fun to know in advance I guess. I must also point out the odd part of the data mine, and that's that these float planes received a proper economy data like rank, RP and SL costs, repair costs, and so on. Not quite sure what to make of that, but I don't think that means it'll be introduced in the regular air attack tree. And I must also, again, point out that just because the aircraft is present on the ship model, doesn't in any way guarantee that it'll be functional on these ships when the update hits the live server. I think that's all the interesting stuff I could find on the dev server. I'll do my best to cover scout planes if I can get my hands on them in the future. So yeah, goodbye, and may your seas be calm.